But I never thought that it would escalate to this level. His job wasn't meant to gain this kind of attention. Did you ever imagine that when you stepped into this role, you, these are the type of measures that you would have to take? No, I didn't. Now a Metro clerk of courts has resorted to wearing a bulletproof vest for protection. Well, I think January 6th was a good reminder that it can very easily go beyond just words. The final days of the legislative session are moving at a snail's pace. This is the process we're in. Reading bills at length is a part of it. And that could leave critical bills on the table. Plus complaint after complaint about the same issue. If you don't pay it within a certain amount of time, it goes to collections and they make all that threat that goes along with that. Contact Denver 7 works to get answers for people who say they got a parking ticket after paying for parking. Will you be refunding any tickets issued during that time? So I think it's an ongoing issue. We start with some breaking news at 6. Secretary of State Jenna Griswold has now barred Mesa County Clerk of Court Tina Peters from overseeing the November election. Deputy Clerk Belinda Nisley also is barred. Griswold's office has been investigating Peters, who is accused of election equipment security breach. Peters received the most votes among GOP Secretary of State candidates at the Republican Assembly, by the way. All right, busy night. Glad you're with us tonight at 6. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Micah Smith. That decision coming as election security is top of mind for state lawmakers ahead of the legislative session ending tomorrow. This includes security for the systems we use to vote, as well as for elected officials. And tonight we have in-depth look at these bills and the work still ahead for lawmakers. So we begin with Denver 7's Patrick Perez and the story of a local clerk of courts protecting himself ahead of midterms. I never thought that it would escalate to this level. Even as Adams County Clerk and Recorder Josh Ziegelbaum sits in his office and talks with us, he's wearing a bulletproof vest. Did you ever imagine that when you stepped into this role, these are the type of measures that you would have to take? No, I didn't. When I left the Marine Corps, I thought that was the last time that I was going to be wearing body armor and hear him again. Ziegelbaum says increasing threats following the 2020 presidential election have forced him to improve security at his elections office in Brighton for himself and his staff. I think the worst one that we've received was somebody telling us that they would see us on the battlefield and they would walk away from it. Some of these improvements include a remodel, which when completed will offer better protection for his employees. I think January 6th was a good reminder that it can very easily go beyond just words. You repeat a lie, enough, people start to believe it. And I think that there was probably a coordinated effort at the very top and others just um, eventually felt that it was truth and, and began to follow. To combat this, a bill that's currently in the state legislature would prohibit election officials from spreading misinformation or accessing a room of voting equipment without an authorized escort. While this is something Ziggobaum has already implemented, he says the legislation is necessary. I do know a number of clerks out there who don't necessarily have the best interests of the community in mind. Ziggelbaum is up for re-election this November, and despite the conspiracy theories and threats, he's not backing down. Do you ever think, you know what, maybe I need to go do something else, this is not worth it? No, there isn't actually another job that I could imagine doing. I absolutely love what I do. In Brighton, Patrick Perez, Denver 7. Ziggelbaum says his security measures will continue into the midterm elections this November in order to ensure that his offices vote centers, drop boxes, and voters are protected. All right, I want to take a look into a bill meant to provide security for certain elected officials. Senate Bill 133 would provide CSP patrol for members of the General Assembly upon request. The Secretary of State, State Treasurer, and Attorney General also would be able to request the security. Now, county officials like uh, Clerk Ziegelbaum there would not fall under this protection yet. There is a second hearing still happening at the Capitol. Now, this election security system bill, which was made out of the Tina Peters investigation, is now on the verge of passing. Senate Bill 153 increases basic security measures, including 24-7 surveillance and key card access to rooms where election equipment is stored. The Senate has to approve an amendment before it now goes to the governor's desk. The remaining 24 hours or so of the legislative session is going to be chaotic. Let's break down why. As of this morning, there were still 199 bills to get through. There's also a clear divide between Democrats and Republicans. For Democrats, it's about pushing their priorities past the finish line. For Republicans, it's about running out the clock and making sure bills are read at length. This session, this is a session where we have really put Coloradans first and we really set partisanship aside to help tackle some big issues that have systemically uh, failed 
uh, this state in the past. Reading at length is, is a process that the Supreme Court just decided last year that, that is constitutional, that is part of what the minority has in their toolbox to use. And so uh, part of it too is just making sure that we keep that fresh in everybody's minds. This is, this is the process we're in. Reading bills at length is a part of it. Democrats have thrown out the idea of a special session if their top priority bills don't get heard. Now, doing so would be at the expense of taxpayer money. This is one of the most common complaints to contact Denver 7. People all over the Denver Metro say they got a parking ticket after they paid for parking. Our consumer investigator Jacqueline Allen is learning that some of those people are getting their money back as the city of Denver steps up to help. So it's a fast way to make money. No surprise, downtown parking is at a premium. My daughter had a cheerleading event at the convention center. What did surprise Jeff Gonzalez weeks after he paid to park to see his daughter cheer? The $80 notice in the mail from Parking Revenue Recovery Services. And then I just immediately contacted the mayor's office because I just knew that this didn't really add up and make sense. When the city started investigating, they uncovered an entirely different issue. All those tickets were torn up. Eric Escudero with Denver Excise and Licenses says that parking lot's business license had expired in 2020. And this isn't the only downtown lot with an expired license. Should they get their money back? They absolutely should get their money back. Uh, because that parking garage or lot was not operating legally and they don't have the right to issue a ticket. Did you know that the parking lots weren't licensed? In most scenarios, all of the, the lots are licensed. Parking Revenue Recovery Services co-founder John Conway says his client's lots are licensed now, blaming the pandemic. Well, there's been a lot of challenges through COVID and staffing. Um, you know, I know uh, the web building was closed, the city building for a while, and so processes were slowed down. But Denver Excise and Licensing says they've been working the entire pandemic and that drivers ticketed in unlicensed lots should get refunds. The city has already helped get five tickets thrown out. And the last thing people should have to worry about is that they're going to get a ticket that they should not be issued for finding a place to park. They're not allowed to issue tickets. Will you be refunding any tickets issued during that time? So I think it's an ongoing issue and it's a challenge that uh, people are working with the city on. Will you refund these tickets? So I, again, I, I think it's a challenging situation uh, caused by you know, uh, reduced staffing levels. And I think it's a, I think it's an ongoing issue that we're working with both the city and the property owners. While they work, Jeff's ticket was dismissed. The city's encouraging anyone with concerns about parking tickets to call 311. On another level, I'd like to see that taken care of for everybody. For Contact Denver 7, I'm Jacqueline Allen. And one reason Contact Denver 7 may be seeing more complaints, Parking Revenue Recovery Services recently installed dozens of new cameras around Denver parking lots. And they say parking enforcement will be easier. And eventually the company plans to charge for parking subscriptions. If you ever have anything you want Contact Denver 7 to look into, please call the number on your screen or you can email contact7 at the denverchannel.com. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office says someone is targeting female real estate agents claiming to be a deputy. Deputies say the person tells women they missed a court date and there is a warrant out for their arrest. One woman was told to meet the deputy to compare signatures from a supposed subpoena. The Sheriff's Office says if you receive a suspicious call like this, call their office to confirm the validity of the deputy. The Bureau of Land Management is putting a bigger focus on fertility control of wild horses and burrows. BLM is currently looking for a new contract to humanely gather, treat with fertility control, and then release horses back into the wild. The BLM roundup of horses has created national outrage after horses rounded up last year in Colorado have died from an equine flu outbreak at the BLM facility in Canyon City. BLM hopes to make $20 million available over the next one to five years for these new efforts. The State Board of Education has voted to reorganize the Adams 14 School District. The district presented its improvement plan to the State Board of Education today. The state intervened following years of poor performance. The state's decision could include consolidating with surrounding districts, annexation, or complete dissolution. Colorado snowpack is in trouble, and it won't get better anytime soon. Beautiful 70s today. Tomorrow, the temperatures will push near record high. <coughs> Paramedics don't always know what they're walking into. When I was trying to talk to her and figure out the story, it just nothing seemed to make sense. It's how they responded is getting this pair recognized. Everyone thinks EMS is guts and glory and driving fast, um, but a huge part of it is social work um, and compassion for our patients.